All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show this. We're actually falling behind time, so I really want to make sure I get through this. Um, but this is, yes? Is this what we're really writing? Yes. Really Jamie, I, I apologize, okay? No, I can't no, always I get it right, but yes, sure this would be the exact no, same no, one, okay? So in Jasmine, as I'm, when we're going through this one, there's actually going to be two different ways I want you guys to go through this problem, all right? Um, we can go ahead and apply with fractions. Or we can obviously just always get rid of fractions. And we went through this a couple times before. The first thing, guys, whenever you see a fraction, is the first thing I would say is just get rid of your fraction. right? We have a fraction because 4 does not divide evenly into 3. So to undo 4 divided evenly into 3 is undo divided by 4, which would be to simply just multiply by 4. So just because I'm writing this up here, I'm going to take everything and multiply it by 4. So you multiply the 4 times here, you multiply the 4 times here, and the 4 times here. The reason why I don't multiply the 4 times this is because 3 fourths times negative 4x plus 8, that is considered one term together because they're connected by multiplication. They're connected by multiplication right here. So you don't, distri you don't distribute across multiplication, right? When I say 3 times 2 times 4, you don't say 3 times 2 3 times 4, right? No, 3 times 2 times 4 is 3 times 2 times 4. If it was 3 times 2 plus 4, then yes, you distribute across addition, across subtraction. But we don't distribute across multiplication. Does everybody understand that? Because it's a confusing, confusing point here. So 4 times 3 fourths is just going to be 3 times negative 4x plus 8. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 2 is 8. Okay. The other way you could do this is simply just apply distributive property. Right? So I could do 3 fourths times negative 4x plus 3 fourths times 8 plus 4 is greater than or equal to 2. So you can also just apply distributive property. Now let's work through this. If we apply distributive property here, you guys are probably like that. Negative 12x plus 24 plus 16 is greater than or equal to 8. Over here, the 4s divide out. I'm left with negative 3x. Here, those divide into 2. 2 times 3 is positive 6. Plus 4 is greater than or equal to 2. Anybody have any questions on what I have done? Because I'm doing the problem twice. Yes? Here? Here? When I multiply 4, 4 times 3 fourths. But I thought we out. Well, you could think about them canceling out. They're not really canceling out. 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. Or 3 over 1, which equals 3. Same thing. But yeah, that's all I got 3 right there. The four. <laughs> Does that make sense? You're multiplying three times four times three fours. So yes, you could say the fours divided into one, which just leaves you with the three. Okay. Now, the next step is again before we get to this, we got to make sure that we combine our like terms. You guys see we have these two terms right here, and these two terms right here. So I have negative 12x. This becomes 30, which is plus 40 is greater than or equal to 8. Over here, I could say negative 3x plus 10 is greater than or equal to 2. Now I have simplified it down to a two-step equation. Now again, guys, I know I'm doing it twice. This obviously is, um, they're not exactly the same, but you'll be able to see we'll get the same answer. So I subtract 40. Subtract 40, negative 12x equals a negative 32. And the important thing that I wanted to, to under, have you guys get with is now I'm dividing by a negative 12. So, ah, shoot, what happened? So when I divide by a negative 12, though, I got to make sure whenever you multiply divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. So I have x is now less than or equal to 
32 divided by 12 is going to be 1, 2, 24, and 8 twelfths. Right? 24, yes, and 8 twelfths. 8 twelfths reduces down to 4 sixths, which is 2 thirds. So I'm just going to estimate what the decimal You guys do not have many decimal. 2.6, yeah. 2.66. And we can go and verify that over here, too. If I subtract 10, subtract 10, negative 3x is greater than or equal to negative 8. You guys can see that. Yeah, how many times does negative 8 go into there? Ne or, I'm sorry, negative 3 go into negative 8? It goes in there two times, right, with 2 over 3 remaining. So you're not going to have many fractions, but let's just go through again um, what to do with this. And sorry, I had to make up the problem. Ah, you guys are running out of time. All right. So just please note, guys, whenever you multiply, divide, you flip the sign. Now we're dealing at 2.6. So I can say, all right, there's 2, there's 3, 4, 5, 1, 0. 2.66 is going to be roughly right there. Notice that it's less than or equal to, not less than. So it's going to be a part of my solution. And if you're having trouble determining, should I go left or should I go right, just what I do is pick points to the left and to the right, and then plug them in. Is 0 less than or equal to 2.66? Is five, le is 5 less than or equal to 2.66? Obviously, 5 is not less than or equal to that. That's false. Obviously, 0 is less than 2.66. So that's true. You always shade towards true away from false. And there you go. OK, so it's OK to have decimals, ladies and gentlemen. There are a couple problems on your homework that you do have decimals.